What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we are going to be talking about Angular View Child and Angular Content Child. So in regular JavaScript, you have this statement function called get element by ID. And what get element by ID does is it takes whatever you put in here and it goes out into your HTML and it grabs the actual element by the ID. So if you had an H1 here and you went out and you put get element by ID and this H1 element had an ID of some element, it's going to go get it and it's going to return an element object. And I'm gonna use my pen here. I'm using my mouse for some reason, but this will return what's called an element object. And what a lot of people don't really realize is that the element object is huge. It's a big object and it has all different types of stuff that you can use to manipulate this H1. And in the same context, what we have in Angular, we don't have get element by ID. We have view child. That's all that view child is. View child is the equivalent of this, but in Angular's form. And you also need to be aware that what you put in here is going to be greatly different from what you put into ViewChild. You got to remember that you're not putting um, HTML tags inside of it. You're either putting components, template refs. If you don't know what template refs are, this is what a template ref is. Um, and you can also just put services in there. You can even go as far for people who are that have been working in Angular for a long, long time, there's this thing called tokens, and tokens are pretty much services. So you can even go as far as that, but you can't use CSS selectors. Unfortunately, you can't. So here's how ours is going to work. What we're going to do is we're going to just have a variable template ref, and this is the most common probably use case that you're ever going to see is you're going to, we're going to make a variable template ref and look, look where the red is. These are what you need to pay attention to. And then we're just gonna take our Pokemon detail and we'll console log it out into the console. And you can see because each, each way that somebody uses this is going to be different. And I think the last time that I used it, it was for some type of canvas thing but we'll just console lock it and this will be enough because I think at this point you guys are intermediate kind of becoming intermediate so I just kind of expect that you know what you're going to do with it so here's the first thing that we need to do is actually wire up our template ref I think there's many ways that you could go about this you don't have to uh, go about it my way but I'm just going to go into the Pokemon list and I am just going to go down here and put a nice little template ref, uh, actually calling a template ref. And I'm just going to call this Pokemon ref. Just call this Pokemon ref. And that should be good for that. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my actual Pokemon list and going to create the view child. So let's go in here, view child, and I'm going to call it Pokemon ref. Then I'm going to go in here and give it same thing. So we're going to go Pokemon ref, and I'm going to put a null call lessing, sometimes called a bang, in there. So we have the angular view child, and then Let's go, we also need to console log it. So this is another area that will probably trip a lot of people up. So I'm just gonna go back to the whiteboard just to kind of talk a little bit more in depth about it. So what I'm about to be using is what's called an ng after view init. If you put this in regular ng init, it will not work because it still hasn't gone out and actually pulled out the object that we need. You have to use view child um, after the view is rendered. So that is why we have this ng view init. 
So just key warning, I'm gonna highlight this in red bunch. You want to pay attention to this because that is a gotcha if there is one, because it will show up as undefined if you don't um, put it in the ng after view init. And ng after view init really is not that complicated. It's just after the view render. So we have to make sure that we have that. Okay, so another thing is is that ng after init inherits from after view init up here so if we want access via inheritance to that ng this function that we need in order for it to run we're going to have to have after view init because we need all of because we need it to actually tie into that code that's going to execute after so we're going to go ng after view init and what's going to happen is we are just going to console log it. So I'm going to go in here and let's see. I just called it Pokemon ref. Looking good. So let's fire this thing up and see if it works. Okay. So there is a problem with the code. And I was thinking about actually, I was thinking about, I was like, damn, I'm going to have to remake this video. But this is actually a good segue into content view children so what is happening here and i totally forgot i can't believe i forgot this is that because this is iterating because there are three pokemon in this pokemon list what's happening is is i need to use view content children that's the reason that it's not loading it's because it actually needs to be view content children and because it's more than one child. If it's just one child, you can use just content view child, but because it's more than one and it's in the for loop, I had to use content uh, view children. So let's go ahead, let's run it, let's see what happens. And I think it did. I'm just gonna refresh it just to make sure. And we have a query list, and there are three Pokemon detail components within our Angular View Children. That is going to be the video for today. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit, this, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.